like to invite uh, uh, Ms. Elena Perez Villanueva de del Caz. She is the deputy head of mission for Spain in New Delhi. And Spain, as you know, was a European Union gender champion until recently. Uh, Maria Perez is a Spanish diplomat since 2005, and she had made significant progress on women's issues within the Foreign Office, served as Deputy Head of Mission in Hanoi. She was Counselor in Paris and Consul in Bangkok. Uh, she was also uh, served as the Head of Cabinet of the Director of the Development Agency, AECIB, where she was responsible for cooperation with several countries in Africa and in Asia. And prior to becoming a diplomat, she's worked in the development cooperation uh, a space, which is fantastic because now there is no dichotomy between the so-called soft issues and the hard issues, thanks to the initiatives of, uh, of women diplomats like you. And what is particularly interesting for us is uh, looking at the amazing strides that your country has made on gender equality. Uh, you know, the organic laws. And I was struck by the fact that your Article 14 is on equality, and our constitutional Article 14 is also on equality. Uh, that's more than just a coincidence. And also the fact that you have a Ministry of Equality and gender monitoring is so much a part of the mainstream of policy and execution of policy in your country. And that has been remarkable, especially, I think, since the turn of the century, there's been a full-blooded thrust. So it would be lovely for us to hear, wonderful for us to hear a bit more about uh, the role of the e, uh, EU gender champion. What were the difficulties you had to, or the challenges that you negotiated or navigated, both within your own country uh, as well as uh, among the countries of the EU, and also your wide experience in Asia and Africa. What spaces exist for dialogue, for bringing this partnership or this forum alive? in the very sense. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for being here. It's really a privilege to be surrounded by such a wonderful panelist. I am uh, not an ambassador. I'm the deputy. I'm very happy being a deputy ambassador, honestly. I find it. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that we can discuss later is whether women are less ambitious or not. When that's one of the things we discuss in Spain. Why are, don't we have more women ambassadors? Maybe because some of us or many of us, some don't think they are qualified and some are just not interested. I don't know what I'll do in the future, but for the moment I am very happy. I have a very feminist ambassador. We can also talk about the word feminist. And I'm very happy to see there's a lot of ladies here and quite a number of gentlemen, because as I always say, most women, not all of them, are already convinced that we need gender equality. So it's very, very, I'm very happy to see that there are young and uh, uh, men here also convinced. Uh, I thank you for the opportunity to present. There are so many things that I'd like to say that I think we, did, we could spend here the whole day. But I would like to just introduce briefly the gender equality uh, initiative. Uh, that Spain was uh, heading for six months until this uh, early March. The European Union delegation will be able to tell you more, but for us both in, uh, in the member states and in the European Union as a whole, gender equality is a priority, both inside the European Union and in our countries and abroad in our foreign policy. So uh, there is this initiative that is called Gender uh, Championship through which one of the embassies present in a country will head the activities uh, regarding gender equality. So uh, in India, it started with uh, uh, Finland, followed by Estonia, then Sweden, and Spain was last year, I just realized it was the first time that it was an embassy headed by a man. After us, it's France, which is also a man, and then Italy, and then uh, there's a lot, I think, a lot of other, uh, other volunteers. We have been trying to, th this initiative is very wide. I see Delphine there smiling, <laughs> which is responsible for this policy, and there's also Lorenzo. Uh, and uh, it's 
very wide and we try to represent uh, the gender equality policies in everything. So in each embassy, depending on the work or their speciality, let's say, uh, we'll do some work. We, what we tried was to go out of the embassy world and go out in public. We have a big cultural life, let's say. So we tried to never give lessons, so just to show what women can do. And our logo was like, uh, you c women can do whatever they want. So we tried to go out and make it public. So we had concerts, we had exhibitions, we had round tables with journalists, with uh, women who have reached uh, high positions, not only in diplomacy, but in this case in journalism and in uh, development cooperation too. So we tried to, to show all the things that we can do and all the things that you young ladies can aspire to. We had cinema, so just to show all the things that, that we can do. One of the things that I was precisely wanting to do was to contact more the ambassadors because uh, we also have in, the, in, in Spain, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, is a, an association of women diplomats that maybe we can talk about later. But uh, what we tried with gender uh, championship was, was that, to show that. And I was very happy to see that after Spain was uh, in charge during these six months, it went to France in an event that was ministerial level because it was during the G20 uh, ministerial meeting. So the Minister of, uh, the French Minister of Foreign Affairs and Mr. Borrell, who is the high representative, so let's say, uh, like the foreign affairs minister of the whole European Union, were the ones who uh, got the flag for France. So I think we were very proud that we got to get that level and to get it more visible. Uh, so actually you were asking about the trip in Spain towards uh, gender equality. It's true that it's been a long way. So sometimes it's not well known that Spain has uh, gone really through a long way from uh, in the 20th century. I would uh, just remember that the first ambassador, female ambassador was in uh, the 1930s. She was ambassador to Sweden uh, for a brief period. In 1931, we had vote for women. She, they could elect and they could be elected. Actually, they could be elected before they could vote. but. Uh, it was only briefly because in 1936 there was uh, the beginning of civil war followed by 40 years of dictatorship where women's rights went backwards. But in 1975, the society had evolved a lot. We had a new constitution and one of the principles is precisely like you said, gender equality, non-discrimination on any grounds, uh, race or uh, age or whatever. And we, uh, gender is one of the main priorities. Uh, it uh, changed little by little, and in 2005, I think there was a big change because it was the first time that we had a government with more women than men. And little by little also, there were more and more uh, women in parliament. Now we are at 40 something. There was the biggest number was 47, I think, percent at some point, but now uh, there is some 40 something. Uh, with a little help now, there is going to be a law that was uh, introduced recently to, to also promote more women in high positions in uh, the private sector. But uh, the government that we have now, so all the governments have been pushing, there's in a law for against uh, gender violence, and we have worked a lot with partner countries abroad for, uh, for this, against violence, and we have a law uh, for gender equality that has been uh, re redone and uh, advanced with years. But right now, the government that we have, we just lost, lost yesterday two ministers of trade, international trade and health. They were replaced by, by two ministers. But I am always very happy to say that, and this will also help in foreign policy, because one of the things that we need to do, and we need to improve that in my ministry, is the uh, role model and glass ceiling breaking. In my ministry, that could be improved. But I think that uh, the society has changed so much, and now this role model has uh, changed a lot and has improved. So we have, in the ministerial level, we have a prime minister, is a man, so we have never had a woman like you have in India, and uh, 
but we have women in economy, labor, energy, and they are vice presidents of the government, treasury, infrastructure, equality, of course, social policies, education, defense, and justice. So a lot of, a lot of, um, of things that were very masculine and now are led by women. In this, um, this uh, uh, area, we also have a foreign, uh, feminist foreign policy, which only means, and I'm finishing, sorry, uh, it was done by a woman who was foreign minister, so we can talk about what feminist means, but uh, what it means according to her is uh, feminist diplomacy contributes to a better, more just world where women and men are equal in rights and opportunities. Nothing more and nothing less. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, and I think uh, Spain scored the highest on indicator H4, right, on the production and dissemination of uh, sex disaggregated data within the EU. So I think it's an amazing breakthrough. We always used to think of Spain as, a, as being somewhat traditional in terms of social mores, but it's made such a huge breakthrough. Thank you very much indeed.